God is good, and with each day that passes is another day that testers can try out the Paladin class. Now added to Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, Visionary Realms, the indie team developing Pantheon, have released their newest update, recapping all the changes that went into Pantheon, and it's quite shocking. The amount they have gotten done in the past few weeks is pretty incredible. It tells the story that they are indeed moving in a great direction, and getting the world more fleshed out, and feeling like an MMO on a good pace. There's been a lot of negative kickback from the community between not liking the art and disagreeing with the addition of their testing mode, and I understand, but you can't argue with the facts. We'll break down what Visionary Realms has been up to with Pantheon development, and it's quite impressive to say the least. My name is Nathan, I cover MMOs and RPGs, so please hit that like button like it owes you money and subscribe for more. So first up, if you know me, you know I've been waiting on the Paladin class for quite some time now. And Joppa promised a few weeks back that he would get the Paladin and the Warrior into testing before Christmas. Well, here we are, a few weeks later, in early November, and the Paladin is in. We're gonna break down all the abilities the Paladin has currently, and I'd love to show you the gameplay footage, but it's all under NDA. But fret not, I'm in talks with the developers to get this Paladin in your face to see as soon as I can get permission. Now, before we dive in on the Paladin, let's talk about the other additions to Pantheon Rise of the Fallen from the past few weeks of development. A really big and awesome update was extending the amount of time you're allowed to explore the world of Terminus for each mission. It used to only be one hour, and, you know, that's not a lot of time to explore a world, right? They did double that. It is now two-hour sessions before you must leave and go back to the tower to prepare for the next adventure. Now, two hours has a much better feel to it, and it makes this mode infinitely more playable and enjoyable, in my opinion. They also have adjusted out-of-combat health and mana regeneration for it to be faster, and they've added a ton of new textures to armor. They've also added some new items to the loot table, many gathering and crafting updates as well, such as Animations for trees falling when you're logging, new craftable items, the ability to craft chain and play armor, players can now tan thick leather, and a ton of balancing and tuning to the crafting and gathering professions. They've also done new cave art updates, including a complete revamp of the Goblin Cave. The small town of Avalia also had their docks and their well completely revamped. The night sky has been remade, but they did say they still need to add that second moon. The lighting system for caves is also in. They've added more combat abilities to NPCs. Abilities such as Grip Line, Mark of the Fire Claw, Skyman's Pact, Wind Strider, Awaken Line, Writ of Refreshing, Erudite Mind, and Lyris Grace can all be used by NPCs during battles. There have also been a ton of class updates to the Cleric, the Shaman, and the Enchanter due to data and player feedback. Synced doors can now be opened and closed by players with the system for keys to unlock Locked Door is coming soon. They're kind of in the, the process of doing that right now. They upped the difficulty of named mobs and bosses. They've added new armor and now have armor sets for every class. They've added critical bonus to a bunch of staffs in the game to test how this will impact wizards and enchanters. They fixed loot tables for dungeons to give higher quality items in the treasure chests. And yes, I refuse to call them crates. They've added loose loot, just stuff you find lying around in the world. They've also added several new rare spawn mobs with new valuable loot rewards. There's also been a ridiculous ton of updates to the audio from new music tracks, one of which you're listening to right now, along with tons of others. New sound effects for a ton of creatures, ambient sounds that just really does add so much to the immersion that I can't really even express in words. There also is a huge optimization update they increased performance incredibly with players seeing big upticks in frames per second. They've also added some new animations, improved shadow quality, and they do have shadows for cloud coverage which looks really amazing in game to see the kind of shadow of the clouds uh, kind of roll across the land. And a ton of bug fixes they got for player feedback and data collected from the testers. Now I want you to keep in mind that this is just a few weeks of work. Visionary Realm said this mode that they introduced would be good for data so they could make this MMO, and this is definitely a step in the right direction to show not tell. 
The problem I have is that I still can only tell you that these things have went into the game. I've been shown these things. Testers have been, we've been shown these things, but I can't show you yet. But I'm working on it, but I can say I've been very impressed with the amount of progress we've been seeing, and all the above mentioned updates have made significant progress into the world. Into Pantheon getting completed. But I saved my favorite bit of information for last, the Paladin. That's right, they got the Paladin in testing, and I wanted to talk about all the abilities the Paladin currently has, but keep in mind, obviously these things are gonna change as they get more data and player feedback. At level one right now, the Paladin will have Lay on Hands, an ability to completely restore the health of, the tar of your target. They also get Ward Undeath at level one, which speaks for itself, so right from the start, the Paladin has a great heal, in which they can expect a lengthy cooldown, obviously, for something that powerful, and a very nice attack versus undead. Now, at level 2, they're going to unlock their taunt, the Paladin taunt, which is called Insight. And at level 3, they get Edict of Celestial Fury. This reflects a damaging melee attack ability or spell back at the attacker and increases the Paladin's wrath. At level 4, they get Oath Flame which is a small heal. And at level six, you're gonna get Vinger's Vow, which generates a thousand wrath and increases damage taken by 25% for 10 seconds. So kind of a trade-off there for that extra wrath. And then at level seven, you're gonna get Oath of Might, which is an in which increases your strength and stamina by one for 12 minutes, so a little buff. At level eight, you're gonna get Hymn of Devotion, which is an aura, and it increases the outgoing healing of your group members by 10%. Your healer's gonna love you for that one. At level eight, you get Wrathful Aegis. Radiate celestial flame around you in an eight meter radius. Enemies inside this radius will generate increased hate and take divine damage over time. This is how paladins are going to hold threat from multiple mobs. At level nine, you're gonna get Halt Undeath. They didn't give a description here, but I think it speaks for itself. Halt, stop it in its tracks, a root for undead, I'm going to assume. And also at level 9, you get Lance of the Lightful. This impels the target with a bolt of celestial light, dealing divine damage and stunning targets below 25% health for 3 seconds. It's very common in games like EverQuest um, and old school MMOs that once the, the enemy's health gets lowered, they try to run away. This will come in handy for stopping them from getting away and attracting more mobs. Maybe running, maybe the enemy's running into a pack of mobs, not good, you're about to get trained. You can use this, a paladin can use this ability, stun it, and hopefully kill it real quick. At level 10, you're going to get Vigilance. No description here. You're also going to get Faithful Strike, some kind of attack, no description. And you're also going to get, at level 11, Golden Aegis. Conjure the Golden Aegis, rendering you invulnerable to all damage and protecting you from stun, root, and mesmerize effects for 10 seconds. So this is your bubble. This is the Pally bubble, and you get it at level 11. Not bad. And at level 12, the Edict of Celestial Authority. So you recite a sacred word of power, stunning the target for 5 seconds. And at level 14, you're going to get Living Light, which restores the health of an ally. After the heal occurs, it jumps to the most injured group member as long as they're within 20 meters. So very, very good. And then at level 15, you're going to get Oath of Valor. Increases your strength and stamina by 2 for 12 minutes. So all this is actually in testing right now. If you are a pre-alpha tester, you can't play the Paladin. These abilities are in. And already, I think the Paladin is living up to the class fantasy, in my opinion. And I'm extremely excited for the day I get to show off the Paladin to all of you. Whether Visionary Realms lets me stream it or make a video on it, I just look forward to it. I will not stop asking until they let me do it. And I just want to say, we got the Warrior still coming in the next month and a half, along with more updates in progress. Pantheon is on the right track. They aren't off the rails like many would have you believe, and I understand that some of you are confused or not quite understanding what Visionary Realms is trying to accomplish with the mention of a mode may in that, you know, mode may bring some memories of some other projects to mind, but trust me, although I understand where you're coming from, it's different here, because this mode puts you directly in the world of Pantheon, you know, the one they're working on that all these updates went into. You just have a two hour time limit and the death penalties are much more severe than normal. Pantheon Rise of Fallen is still deep in development and making major strides to get to the next phase. And if this few weeks of progress is anything to judge them off of, I'm gonna say that obviously this testing mode must be helping them because this is a lot of updates. 
coming very fast. They mentioned they're doing a couple of patches per week because that's just how much data they're getting and how fast they're able to react to that and get things into the game. And mix that in with the fact that this art change are able to get more creatures and models and make the world quicker. And it does appear that all these things are actually happening. So good job Visionary Realms on the updates and the hard work. Keep it up, I say. And I hope you enjoyed my recap of all the recent updates. And I hope you're as excited as I am about the Paladin, that finally it's in Pantheon and that the warrior is right behind it. And then we'll have all three of the tanks for release in the game. Leave me a comment and let me know if you agree that this is a big, healthy amount of progress from the past few weeks. And until next time, my friends, God bless and happy gaming. I want to give a very special thank you to the members of Napalm for your contributions month over month in keeping me full time. You help me pay the bills so I can keep streaming and pumping out content, and I truly appreciate all of you. Thank you so much, and I think you might be interested in becoming a member of the channel. Please click the join button down below the video for more information and join our family. And I want to give an extremely big shout out to the Lords of Napalm, Bounty Code, Jared Woodhouse, Daimlos, Sparrow, Random Rob, Rodney Oman, Galarain Moonsong, What's the Takeaway? Bad Wolf Gaming, Cobalt, William Long, Robert Deneca, Ohalo, and Angel Tari. Thank you for your highest tier membership.